Hello and welcome to the Podium Podcast. Um, I'm Simon Hartley. And I'm Tom May. And over the years I've heard hundreds if not thousands of people talking about the power of applying sports thinking and elite sports thinking into business. And I think it's a genuinely great idea. But I want to know how, how does it apply? What works, what doesn't? So during the course of these shows, we'll be talking to people who are making that transition and applying their own performance mindset into the world of business. Today, we are joined by Premiership rugby star and uh, international rugby player and actually uh, Barbarians kicking legend, George Cruz. Welcome to the show, George. Thank you for having us on. How's the body? Oh, all right. Yeah, I'm just, I'm slowly getting through my last sort of few bruises and oh wow uh, and you know i've got a broken thumb at the moment so just ironing out the last hopefully the last you know bits of uh torture that we go through uh now i'm retired and um <laughs> yeah like I, I can't really envisage myself you know breaking a leg in say the office uh or or, or whatever but um yeah i hope not <laughs> I, you never know someone might blindside you but uh yeah, yeah, body's all right. I'm uh, hopefully escaped in uh, in one piece, which is, I guess, the goal for a lot of people as well at some point. Yeah. Um, let's hope that's not a commentator's curse. Problem. That one. <laughs> the, uh, there you go. I w- let's just hope the I won't break my leg in the office is not a commentator's oh, curse. Yeah, I'm trying to. F- I've, I've done it. We have to do a, a risk assessments, and I, I, it's you know, it's a lot less risky than a, than say the training ground or the or the playing field. So I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> But I mean, if we if we chat about your the sort of highlights, when you look through your Wikipedia page, you see uh, Premiership uh, trophies, you see European trophies, playing for England, yeah. British and Irish Lions, all that sort of stuff. Um, but where did it start for you? It uh, started probably with jealousy, to be honest. Uh, my, my brother, um, uh, my, like, or, or brotherly competition. So down at a place called uh, Dorking in Surrey. Um, I went down there when I was sort of seven or eight, maybe. Um, local grassroots rugby, as majority start. I'm sure you would have started there, Tom. Like it, it starts in, in your grassroots, and um, yeah, I just saw my brother was like killing it. He was, you know, he was getting lots of like praise, lots of attention from a family, and sort of, you know, I could see the, the mates he was getting outside of it. Um, yeah, it was all kind of positive stuff. So I was like, oh, well, let's have a piece of that, and um, yeah, just probably took it a little bit too far. Um, but yeah, like, like really, it, it, start, it often starts with family or friends that, are, you know, drag you along to a session and then you kind of, you either fall in love with it or you, you know, you move on to the next sport. And uh, for me, it was a, yeah, it was a, I fell in love with it. I think, especially Dorking at that point, they, you know, they did an incredible group, uh, incredible task of like, making it ridiculously social. So, uh, mm. you know, it was, it was a place for like four friends it was placed and then obviously as you progress to having a few beers and so on like you know you, you don't really I don't know, you didn't want to not be part of it um and they did a good good job of keeping a lot of those those guys together and you know creating good friendships when did you leave i left at 18 so George, was that, was i didn't that... do any academy stuff um so i did some school stuff so sort of your your saturday sun so saturday school uh sunday rugby um maybe with a, a night in, in between, um, on, you know, having a few beers. So pretty jam packed weekend. Um, and I left when I was, when I was 18. Yeah. So, um, yeah, kind of went straight from there to, to thousands. And was that, did that, do you think that, um, that helped sort of stoke the fire of what you wanted to do? Were you all, were you always striving to be a pro or were you, did it, did that yeah. sort of come, out of yeah, that, very different bit. to I'd say very different to the the setup which a lot of others would have gone through. So I don't know if you've done like academy stuff, but I was I was like not uh, yeah I was very much uh, I got a lucky trial through someone who knew someone uh, at Saracens uh, when I was eighteen. So as soon as I left school, I had a week long mm-hmm. trial. Um, so I wasn't re- I was not prepared. I was as in I was pretty skin and bones. I was quite raw. Like I, I played a lot of rugby. Um, but yeah, I was, I was pretty crap to be honest. So I think, um, <laughs> I think, yeah, p- coaches pick on different stuff, you know, when they, especially when they're giving out, uh, like five grand Academy contracts, that it's not much to them. So, uh, I think they picked on sort of ability maybe to, to work hard and sort of maybe improve quick enough. Uh, and yeah, whereas I think a lot of the lads who were already there, maybe like your Owen Fowles or Jamie George's, they'd been there for, you know, five years already and they, 
like they'd learned all the basic skills. They had a good strength base from gym and stuff like that. Um, so for me, it was about playing a bit of catch up and um, yeah, it's kind of how, mm. how, how the journey went. Mm. Was it a pretty steep learning curve? I mean, it's not just learning yeah. Yeah, uh, more about rugby, is it? It's the S&C, it's how to yeah. lift weights, it's how to be a pro. Yeah, de- definitely. Like you look at uh, like maybe Bambi. Uh, that's kind of what I, that's what I, I went in at. <laughs> like just like limbs all over the place, way too gangly. A bit um, just had no coordination. Uh, but you, and you really could tell that those guys were ready maybe to train with the first team and stuff, and I was ready just to sit in the gym for a year, um, which I did. You know, I put on maybe two and a half stone, um, sort of. Like spent all year based on basic skills, um, and kind of like you build yourself up that way. So I think everyone's got a different path, and that's what I, I do like about say what sport. You know, it's not like you know it's like your your Vardy or something like that. Everyone's got a different path, um, and, and it's just like when, how, where, where you can like slot in. And sometimes it's sometimes it doesn't happen. Sometimes it does, um, and you do you do need a good bit of fortune uh, along the way. Mm. How did um how did that period of time in in the gym where because you just referenced you know you wanted to play all the time yeah. Saturday and Sundays and um, how did that I can imagine how that was probably quite frustrating and, and and at times tedious what what do you think you developed from in, uh, or how how that yeah. helped develop your character for for, for the later yeah, on in your career I, I was fine I was just I was just grateful for any any opportunity or any sort of like like I hadn't had S&C coaches or strength and conditioning coaches. I hadn't had skill coaches, and like so, I was quite new to that. So I was kind of just trying to soak it all up. And you know, I'd I'd get up at I'd get up at the five in the morning at the bottom of the M25. I'd drive to the top. Uh, I'd train, and then in the evenings I'd go the other quarter way around to Essex and train at Barking, and then end up back at the end of the day. Uh, you know, pretty knackered, but um, like so that that sort of stuff. I, I definitely was throwing myself into it. Um, but in terms of tedious, yeah, like, it, it wasn't really because it was all kind of new to me. Uh, it was all stuff I was, you know, like I'm quite practical in the sense that I know I knew I was in a certain space and I knew I had to get to a certain space if I at least wanted a, a sniff. So it was just like kind of crack on and, and you know improve it. And because it because I was so maybe uh, so crap uh to see the improvements was quite pleasing you know like and if you've got some of the, the better coaches around you, you know you, and you want to try hard you, you you know you should be improving really especially at that age so yeah it was, it was you know like anything like in any job any role if you are improving you're growing you're uh, learning i think you know you're, you're pretty much there in terms of job happiness right yeah, yeah, it definitely tends to um, uh, propel, uh, sort of fuel motivation, doesn't it? Propel you forward. Yeah. Um, I, you must have encountered your challenges. I mean, the, the thing that many people don't see when they, you know, only see when you walk out on the TV is all mm. the stuff that goes on in the background. What were the big challenges through your career? Um, injury was like, was probably one. I had like seven ops um, and a couple of MCLs as well, but... They were never like ACLs or anything. They were mainly three-month injuries. So it was kind of frustrating because I'd maybe get to a point, like I, I, was, I was meant to go to a uh, New Zealand tour and then I got to a point and mm. then that would have been my first like sort of tour and there, there was chats around it and and then I got injured and then I was meant to play in, uh, like I was looking like I was going to play in, a, in my first final and then you get injured and those sort of things. So, um, yeah, I, I think... In terms of challenges, I don't know. I had a pretty, I had a pretty step up process. Like I was, like I said, I was poor, and then I, I worked my way up to a point, and then I got my first LV Cup game, then I got my first Premiership game, then I got my first European game, then my first cap, and then Lions, and that sort of stuff. So it, for me, it was like a, it was a, it was a slow burner. Um, but it was a process like of improving. I could see that I was improving. I could see that, you know, maybe at this point I should be at this level. Uh, so it was, I'm quite practical in that sense. So in terms of challenges, mm-hmm. it probably would just be injury and then sort of keeping weight on and, you know, like finding what my role was within the team and accepting that I am like worse at some things, I'm better at some things. So just 
making sure that those are things that you know I try and do more of and 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 work whilst working on the weaknesses. Is that something that Saracens point, pointed out to you? you know, focus on these areas, make your strengths amazingly yeah. strong, uh, and then they set you. I guess individual targets to hit in terms of weight um, and early on with your skills. Yeah, That's- yeah, definitely. I think we we had a very good culture. Clearly, like there's, there's good references to to it um, at Saracens. Um, I think with a good culture, you you can be really honest in terms of look like you're, you're not a good ball carrier. Like just go and hit rucks, or you're strong mm-hmm. in lineup, whatever it is. So. And, but then when you're open with that, with the whole team, then you might have, okay, well, Billy, you're a very good ball carrier. Then, you know, like it just lends itself. There's no kind of, I guess, bullshit around who, you know, ch- trying to do stuff, which is not going to be ultimately best for the team. Like you can always work on stuff in your own time and sort of try and grow in those areas. Um, but I think if you're pretty selfless in terms of, you can get a system in place where everyone's putting their best strengths forward and accepting, um, you know, that, there might be someone better at you in this area and that's not an ego thing, it's just a practicality sort of thing. Then actually you get like a, a good level of people just doing stuff very well, consistently. Um, and that's kind of, that's the, the route I've sort of decided to accept and sort of work work towards, you know, team first. Yeah. I- Simon, we've talked about that, wing, um, how, how people maybe in a, in a workplace environment potentially don't accept that that critique or maybe mm. don't have that um that selflessness that that george talks of there is you know why is it so difficult do you reckon simon to to to, to act in that way part of it i think is that they don't necessarily have that really clear understanding of everybody's role and how it all fits together um and within a within a really good sports team most people understand their role um, and what they're supposed to contribute um, in many, many p- teams I've come across in business, there isn't that understanding in the first place. Um, and if you haven't got that, of course, you don't necessarily know how your super strength contributes. So, uh, and maybe you're not confident enough to bring it. Uh, but yeah, I think having that as a fundamental, I, I do think, as George said, you ju- just being able to be open to your um, to your strengths and your weaknesses, and understand, you know. Um, where you can go and work and uh, and how really helps and the environment around really contributes to that uh, i mean i was chatting to kelly brown about the uh, saracens culture the other day and mm. he would also say you know it, it wasn't it wasn't a fault necessarily if you weren't good at something um and, and actually interesting one to run past you now george he was sort of saying that if you as long as you brought the effort people were happy that mm. you weren't ever going to be the complete player or that you would make mistakes but as long as the effort was there and you were willing to improve yourself that's what they were looking for that that was the sort of foundation to the culture yeah and he, he probably spoke on uh, effort and um oh god forgot um uh, <laughs> effort and skill errors effort and skill errors yeah it's just like, yeah exactly you, you wouldn't get punished if it was a if it was a, a skill error, but you, you know, if, if you're clearly not showing effort, then then yeah, you, you deserve to be sort of punished or kicked out or whatever. You know, you, you'll you'll quickly get sort of spat out. Um, but yeah, I, I'd agree. It's just all you're trying to find is a, a group, a collective of people who are willing to accept and learn and still try and sort of push in the same direction. And, and I guess once it's like a tipping point, if you can get if there's 50 in the squad and you can get sort of 30, 35 of them to do something brilliant, then mm. the other sort of 20 start to look a little bit stupid if they're not doing it. And once yeah. you can get up to like 40 or, you know, 40 people doing that and working hard, then you, you quickly rat out the ones which are, you know, which are not keen to, to push in the same direction. Mm. But I think yeah. there's too many teams or too many environments or workplaces which are kind of like 50-50 that, you know, and, and the, the, the way that that can, someone can, like a few people can drag, you know, another few people down and then suddenly you're, no one really cares that much. Or I think it's, it's one of those like snowball effects. Just the more people you can get over the, the line, I think then suddenly, you know, others start to feel a little bit sort of stupid if they're not getting to the gym early, if they're not doing their stretches, if they're not doing their, I don't know, reports or whatever it is uh, in, in mm. a business world. Um, so that, yeah, that's, yeah, I think that's, that's, that was the goal and it kind of, we got to that point. 
Yeah, absolutely. Look, last thing I wanted to ask you about your playing career. You, you spent a year out in uh, Japan. Uh, how much did that yeah. experience, you know, sort of new language, new culture, all the rest of it, how much did that develop you as a person? Oh, like there's, there's stuff now I'd, I'd do within a heartbeat um, and not really think, oh, gosh, you're like, is that – is that too big a challenge or is that too, am I stupid doing that? Or so there's stuff now I do, um, which I would, yeah, which I would have questioned and spent time thinking about before. Um, so in terms of like giving me a bit more confidence to, um, to take stuff on, I think it's, it's been brilliant, uh, in terms of clearly like the cultural side of it, in terms of just realizing people do stuff differently. Uh, and that's not to say it's right or it's wrong. Um, or it's not to say that, like what we do is right or wrong. Um, but yeah, people just, it's, it's wild how different it is out there. Um, mm. And yeah, and, and there's some things which I just think are so, so good. Uh, and some things you just think, what is going on? But <laughs> again, like, like I said, there's no, there's no right or wrong, is it? It's just the way that a culture has done something over years and years. And it's just, they've all bought into that. Um, uh, but yeah, and also like, I got to play with Aussies, Kiwis, South Africans, which was like you do maybe uh, over here, but uh, in England, maybe like that might be the minority of them uh, over there. There's like, you know, you, I was the only English person there. So like mm -hmm. some of my references, some of my jokes might not have landed, you know, and, and you just got to like, ex <laughs> uh, as always. Um, <laughs> I was going to say, what, what difference there, does that job like, make? Yeah. You free yourself up to like, <laughs> be yeah be a bit more open really and and i think when you come when i've come back i mean i don't want to be that guy who's like oh you know i've seen the world and i've, I've lived in japan for two years like it's i haven't traveled heaps and heaps but it definitely opens your eye especially um with a you know with a culture that different it opens your eyes yeah I, i'm sure tom can appreciate a lot of that from being in france as well um the well uh, yeah, I guess I guess one of the things I learned from being out there is just the French attitude to doing stuff. Oh yeah, we'll Definitely. get that done, and it yeah. just doesn't just doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think I think I agree with the whole. Yeah, I, I certainly came back, and I still ha I still harbour the same feelings that that maybe you know, especially here in London, you are constantly for you constantly feel like you're chasing something, um, whereas in France they're just yeah. like. I've got what I want. Yeah. I'm happy. I, you know, just just let's chill a bit. Uh, which is great, but it's so difficult when you're yeah. immersed in in that within a city to just pull your skill to do yeah, something yeah, different. Yeah. Um, I find that quite hard. Um, but yeah, I mean, l simple things: getting internet installed. Well, yeah, that we'll do that soon. <laughs> Three months later, they've yeah. just done it. It's like, but it makes a question a lot um, of thoughts, maybe that you have had in certain things before. You know. That's the thing I was like, it just questions you. Like, I think that an experience like that, you know, is that, mm -hmm. is that actually the only way to do something? Should I be more open? Especially like when I've been at a club, say uh, from a rugby point of view and for 12 years or something, and then someone wants to do something different. I'm like, no, 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 it should be done like this. And then actually it's like, well, actually, of course there's different ways to do it. And of course there's different ways to do it brilliantly. Yeah. But then also we're in a different environment and maybe the way we do it here definitely isn't the way to do it back over there or so on. So yeah, just and yeah, just just well, it's eye opening, isn't it? Like that's that's the big thing I took from it. Yeah, absolutely. I think so. Like I, some of the things that I, I learn about being in, I mean, you were obviously out there um, for, for a long period of time, but being out there for the for the World Cup, um, I was supposed to go out for four weeks and came home eight eight weeks later, sort of yeah. work wise. But some of the things I saw, yeah. I was just like, like a bit like you said, like some of them are amazing. Some of them are like. How's that yeah, ever yeah, going to yeah. work? Yeah. Uh, like in hotel, I remember when we went out to Japan with um, with Newcastle. Basically, they wanted to meet Johnny, and they flew the, the whole lot of us out. Um, he went home after a week with appendicitis, and yeah. they left with us <laughs> lot. Like, um, so, but they, but but every time we got up in the morning, you're walking down the corridor. The cleaners would stop the yeah. stop hoovering and turn it off the plug and, yeah, and bow yeah. to you, and you're like. You're going to do that. There's 30 yeah, blokes yeah, yeah. coming down here. You're like, it's going to take mm -hmm. ages. You might as well crack on. But, yeah, but it's the whole, the whole sort of, um, I guess that respect, level of respect um, that they, that they, they yeah. stick to that no matter whether it's to their detriment or not. I mean, that, that was one of the um, things that, that stood with me out, out there, but it was, it was certainly yeah. a great place. No, I, there's, 
there's a thousand things you think of a day you just think that is that's quite funny or but that but or that's not funny or that works that doesn't work it makes you think it's, it's mm, absolutely and and it's i guess it kind of adds to the way that you think about business as well and interestingly on, on the business you, you've only just retired from playing um rather uh, sort yeah. of epic finish to your career i have to say uh, i think most most rugby players would cut off their right leg to have a last game like that but you you didn't yeah, find yeah. the business last week you founded the business um a, a fair while ago so yeah. and, and therefore you had a period of time where you were still playing and, and you were running a business how, how did the business come about what inspired you yeah yeah so um about three it would have been th three years ago now um myself and a guy called dom day uh C cbd which is a cannabis based product um got accepted onto uh wada which is a the world anti-doping association so uh mm -hmm. so basically we're dabbling we're both injured dabbling with ways to recover and so on uh found cbd and like that we genuinely found a good use case for it uh looked into i guess fast forward uh looked into other sort of nutrition products we're taking um like a lot of a lot of companies are very good at marketing but some maybe some of their spec or their formulations are pretty poor um so i think we you know we, we spent a good amount of time with some good uh formulators uh and just came up with some good wellness and cbd uh products and really just gone from there so uh, i guess in japan i guess a large uh, a chunk of decision to go to japan was to give me a bit more free time to do business as well so a lot shorter season uh, probably a little bit less sort of head noise and meetings and all those sort of things so again it allowed me to do a bit more um uh, in terms of business wise so it was good sort of halfway house to not retirement because obviously it was my job rugby was my job but it, it it gave me like a bit more free time so yeah so we started three years ago um we're in boots we're going into some more retailers uh we're on online uh you know we've got uh, it was the first first day this morning that uh, all of our all employees were in the office together because obviously I've been away mm. and so on. So there's there's nine of us now, uh, and you kind of like think, well, I'm actually responsible for people, so this is definitely the right decision. Um, uh, and yeah, like it's it's worked well. I know I know this is not how every rugby player gets to get. Um, and like whether the business fails, succeeds, uh, is you know sits and and just does okay. Like it's it's incredibly good for. For, for myself, for Dom, in terms of learning, growing, um, but also, yeah, like I said, we're, we're extremely excited about the opportunities that we've got, and, um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's an exp exciting space and something that we're pretty passionate about. Mm -hmm. what, uh, what role are you sort of taking yeah. on with with the business? Are you using it as a as a way to, to I guess, lead those teams, or or are you more sort of strategy led, yeah. or how, so, how are you spending your time? role as co-founder uh, but in terms of my actual role and what i do um a lot of like investor stuff a lot of network stuff um a bit of like i guess uh pr marketing stuff clearly um but but i'll be mainly going into events and sort of face-to-face -face meeting with customers meeting with um because it's just an area we haven't really been able to do so we're focused a bit more on retail and now you know we the way a lot of marketing I, I, we see going uh, is, is coming kind of full loop back to at least getting some face to face events in and sort of, like I said, meeting your customers, finding out what they like, what they don't like, so that, you know, ideally we're just constantly improving. Um, we are, we've got a very good premium sort of wellness, uh, wellness offering. Um, they are like, it's all tested to the highest max. It's, it's like bioavailable. It's, you know, very, very clean, 100% natural. So it's like we've we've gone for a more premium product um, instead of just you know trying to kick it about at the bottom. But um, yeah, like I said, we're we're very we're very excited about what we're doing. Uh, and my role is to sort of yeah connect a lot of dot, dots really um, mm -hmm. and try and stay focused enough. That's that's we've got a lot of employees like George. Like I I, I pulled in like four of them just now to. To come up, I, I was like, something's in my head. I've got to, I've got to share it. And they're like, no, piss off. <laughs> Get a, <laughs> changing lanes. Changing lanes. You're so, yeah, I've got a bit of uh, work to do on, on being disciplined enough to, to stick to what I do because that's, that is like, you know, if you're trying to do a thousand things, you, you well, there's all, there's heaps of analogies around that, but 
Mm. If you pick a few things yeah. and get them done, I think that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah, yeah. One, one of the little phrases that uh, I kind of coined a, a few years ago is there's nothing more distracting than a head full of great ideas. Um, and it's not just for you, of course, it's for your team as well. And yeah. uh, being the what founder, about a head full of shit ideas? Well, the, <laughs> the, and the trouble is we, we, that's a great, yeah, that's we don't a, think they're <laughs> shit. That's the problem, isn't it? They yeah, might yeah, be yeah. shit, but we don't think they're shit. And that's the big yeah, problem. Yeah, it is true, yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> did you Did you have a... Like, did you study business at school or at university? Did you come out with a business degree or um, it was there kind of entrepreneurial blood in your family, as it were? Or did you just kind of start off thinking, oh, how hard can it be? Let's just go for it. Yeah, um, I, like I've referred to this a couple of times. I'm, like, Saracens did a, an unbelievable job, especially back then. So like sort of 2010, uh, 2008, 2010-ish, like there wasn't really many clubs pushing people to do stuff outside it was all like it was like no rugby 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 so they did a brilliant job of they put a rule of like uh, if you're under 24 or 25 you've got to be doing something whether it's a trades course if you're not interested in university if if, if it's uni degree if whatever it is you've got to be doing something outside um so they um yeah like they, they paid for my university uh they you know helped in, help help me through that um help set up like connections in terms of making sure that it could all happen. They, you know, there were times where I'd have to leave training early, uh, you know, and, and so on. So they were very accommodating in that. They saw the importance of having people who are a little bit more rounded. Um, mm. And that, that I, so I did a business degree there. Uh, then that kind of gave me a, a bit of a, a platform to at least be right. Or oh, I can maybe do something when I'm, uh, when I'm around the sort of 27, 28 age. Mm. Yeah. I think you're, such a difference when, when clubs are like that yeah. forward thinking yeah. um i think i think and we we mentioned it on one of these podcasts before simon during during 19 years of playing i only had one year where i just focused on rugby and that was the year i got dropped the mm. most mm. because actually doing something away from yeah. rugby that made me come to training and want to train gave yeah. me the you know motivate motivate me to come in whereas i just got stale with rugby and i think I think you're right. Like some clubs were rugby, 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 and, and you just you end up with these sort of yeah. robots, uh, yeah. and, and, and you know, in a bit to the to, to the to the Saracens case study, I, I would say you end up with with good yeah. people, rounded people, when you, when you've pushed them to do something else outside of the sort of job yeah. spec, if you like, and like socialise um, people. You know, like you, it's it's. it's there's so many times you see like a, a player, you know, in a in a function, like a lot of them won't want to go and talk to people, which is absolutely fine, and, and I've I've done that sometimes. But uh, some of them won't actually be able to talk to people because they're just they've only ever talked to you know school teachers and and like coaches or you know. So I think it's it's important that um, you kind of pushed sometimes a little bit um, because once you've pushed and you're quite competitive, you know, those things sort of snowball a bit, but sometimes it's just hard. It is hard sometimes to just get off the sofa when you're knackered and, and go and do a, a day or yeah. half a day shadowing or wh whatever it is. It's, it's, it's a bit unnatural, but it, it forces you to have those conversations, which are just completely different. And, and again, it like opens your eyes to it. Oh God, there's another world out here. I do have to probably prepare myself and so on. Uh, but mm. you could be so sheltered, and that's why I think, um, you know, the excuse, people sometimes lean on the excuse of, oh, I've got to be, you know, 100% committed to rugby, like, that, or sport. I think that's a that's a myth, because there's so many days off we get. There's so many days off, um, you know. It's not a full oh, nine to five either, mental. is it, really? It is mental. But, mm. hey, it's life. Yeah, yeah. It's what makes yeah. it so good. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sure, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. what... What did you, uh, what have you taken from your, uh, the mindset that you created or your uh, experiences of leadership and experiences of being in a team? What, what are you, what are you now using uh, within 4-5? Um, I think biggest strength is, is probably just like, it's probably just, I, I like, I enjoy talking to people. I enjoy, uh, I'm curious. I enjoy finding out what people like, don't like, what works for them, what doesn't work. Um, I think that is probably, it's not really like a super strength. It's, it, it's a skill which some like, you know, which can be very handy over a long period of time. I think, uh, you know, mm. the more people you speak to get along with, 
uh, relationship you build relationships with uh, on not a false level. Like like I said, I'm I am generally intrigued around different stuff. So I think if that comes through, then I think that's that's you know that's a skill that's definitely come from rugby uh, and from socialising and sort of. Uh, being part of a team environment and get and understanding, you know, maybe what some people need, don't need, and so on. Uh, but in terms of like leadership stuff, um, like we, there's so much that that we lack as well. So probably just the understanding that we do lack stuff, you know, or, or like I guess that's that skill of accepting that you know there's there's a long way to go still, um, and being quite mm. practical about it. I think once you know about it, maybe you. Uh, and ask people for feedback a bit easier. Mm. Which, I mean, it sounds like that's exactly what you did when you were learning your way into rugby. Um, you, yeah. you had to be aware yeah. of that headroom that you could move into and how you could develop yourself. Uh, mm. And I, I do genuinely think it's a, it's an enormous um, value being able to yeah. see how you can improve. Uh, mm. There's a little experience I've had over the years where, I, you know, if I ask people usually athletes to score themselves on a zero to 10 and 10 means you're absolutely perfect. I normally yeah. find that junior athletes score themselves a nine and the world champions scores themselves a four. And of yeah. course it doesn't mean that the world champions worse. It means they can see the room for improvement, you know, we're yeah. kind of measuring proximity to perfect almost. Yeah. Yeah. Tom, what was the, what's the, the obviously you've been retired longer than me now. What's the a thing that longer. you, yeah. <laughs> Hey, I, that, you said fossil. I didn't say fossil. <laughs> I didn't say that. You, oh, sorry, the connection. Sorry, it might not have been fossil. So, yeah. <laughs> you've um, you've uh, been retired a, a good bit longer than me. Uh, what's the the thing that you've kind of reflected on that you've taken most? I think um, I think what you said there is is an is an ability to relate yeah. to people. I I if I had my time again, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have I wouldn't have transitioned the way I did because I went out on my own. I started my own business development yeah. consultancy. And go, I think going from going from, from from a scenario where you know what you're going to get paid yeah. every month to then literally the the door coming down and then you're chasing invoices or whatever it might be, and I was sort of I was out on my own in, in a in a completely different environment and I got burnt yeah. quickly, and I was suddenly like right the, all the rules have, have yeah, changed yeah. here, um, and you realise there are everyone in the corporate world has a has a slightly different yeah, yeah, agenda. Yeah. Yeah. Um, even, even within different businesses, you've got different personalities that are different departments that are, they're just yeah. slightly tugging in, in not it, not in a in a pro sport that, um, mold of everyone's moving in yeah. the same direction. They're vaguely moving in that sort of general geography, but it's not as tightly yeah. knit. Um, so I found I found that quite interesting. Um, but the ability to relate to people are, that I, can, I completely agree with you, you know, it, for any business to get done, it, it depends mm. on relationships um, and your ability to, to grab the arm of someone or, 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 or the ear of someone while you're having a beer and just say, look, I've got this idea. Mm. What do you think? And because I was a bit like you when I was playing, I was, I was more intrigued by what all of these sponsors were coming. You know, I had amazing businesses. I'm like, wow, like, how have they yeah. set that up? Um, some of them were pretty yeah, niche, yeah. Um, but they're also, they're normally the ones that are like yeah. do amazingly. Um, and I think I think I was uncomfortable that having relationships with people should be the yeah. the skill. I wasn't an accountant or I wasn't a thing, so I was uncomfortable. It took me some time to get used to that, but you know, I, I think when you start to realise the mm. value of it and how in, and how actually it, it's not everyone's yeah. cup of tea. So it does take a certain type of individual to be able yeah. to do that. You become a lot more comfortable with it. Um, but yeah, I think um, if I had my time again, I would have, I would have bought myself a bit more time under under the umbrella of you know that sort of right. Okay, I'm somewhere. I'm doing yeah. something now. I, whereas I was just like out the door and I was like yeah, hundred yeah. miles an hour, which was mm. not the most comfortable. See, place Dylan to Hartley, he spent a good sort of six months just chilling you know and, and like assessing his options and, and and like yeah you know spending a bit of time with family and that sort of side i think that if you've got the luxury of maybe a you know something to fall back on i think yeah. that's a, it's a brilliant idea uh to 
so you don't just jump at the, at the first thing and like I say you get burnt you you know you pick your right options smartly and yeah I think he's, he's and I think he's taken some time to think yeah. over some some pretty good ideas that he's yeah. got from in terms yeah, of business yeah, yeah. hasn't he and and actually sitting back and having time to think about yeah. those I think long term yeah, play, yeah. Uh, but yeah you, you know I mean having my time again I would I'd definitely have loved mm. to spend more time with family at least yeah. Window, last thing I want to explore before uh, handing over to Tom for the quick fire questions. Um, I know uh, from talking to Kelly Brown that Saracens was a really purpose driven environment. I, I mm. checked out your website earlier and saw the little video of you and Dom talking about um, the you know you gained real benefit from using CBD and, mm. you, and and really high quality nutritional supplements and you knew it could be done better. It sounds like there's a you know a really strong sort of purpose behind four five now. Mm. Yeah, like we just I don't really want to like um, chuck out a load of crap, to be honest. Uh, and that's so. So the the aim is to just provide very good wellness supplements for for people who are active. And there's like a heap of people clearly who are at different stages of active, uh, whether they're professional through to doing hot pod yoga, which we did last night. Me and Dom. It was <laughs> honestly, I, I was a broken man. Uh, <laughs> again, it's such a different skill. It reminds me of like the skill of being a rugby player to then being a business player. There are some bits which you just, you can't put your, your legs in those positions yet. So, um, but yeah, in terms of like being, yeah, we, we want to provide top quality wellness supplements. Uh, and I think we're, like we're, yeah, we're doing it, which is nice. Um, I think mm. we've got a really nice range. Uh, it's quite well balanced, pretty, uh, pretty on point. And, um, yeah, I think for us, there's, there's a bigger picture stuff in terms of, you know, some of the things we're doing in the background around uh, helping athletes transition and any sort of advice bits and so on. But, yeah, the, the, the purpose is to, to produce game, game-changing game wellness is what I've been told. To say. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. And, and, I mean, it really resonates with me. My, yeah. my wife's had health challenges for years. She's used it. She's gained real benefit from it. Yeah. Um, I will be pointing uh, her in the direction of your website, uh, 45.com, and actually I'll be giving her the discount code. Oh, uh, if you guys listening... Um, I uh, want the discount code uh, podium pod 20 um, is the discount code uh, check out four five.com and, and use the code. Um, Cause yeah, I'll be uh, certainly firing it across to my, my missus no, um, on that. If there's any sort of questions or anything, we've got a great uh, customer service team in terms of if anyone's unsure, like I, I know education is a big, a big factor around this sort of area, uh, but mm -hmm. I'd encourage, uh, especially on the CBD side, if anyone's interested in using it or trying it, then um, yeah, you, use products that are readily tested. Uh, you know, you can get the certificates there, and they're kind of third party or batch tested. Um, mm -hmm. There are some crap ones on the on the market. There's some good ones as well. So just pick yeah. accordingly. Brilliant, brilliant. Tom, over to you for the quick fire questions, my friend. Right, fire, let's go. What have we got? Sure. George, if you haven't been a professional athlete, what would you have been? And is there another vocation that took your interest? Uh, I would have been a, um, su a, a supplements business owner. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I would have been, uh, originally I was down to do physio at uh, Loughborough. So I probably would have been a physio. Uh, who's the person you admire most in sport and in business? Uh, sport... Uh, this might be a controversial one. I, I think Eddie Jones is unbelievable. His uh, his ability to constantly look for something new in terms of learning, testing players. Like he, he's a guy who has two taxi drivers because uh, you know one needs to sleep basically. So that it, it, he works incredibly hard. Um, I think um, I think he's yeah I think he's brilliant from a sports point of view. Um, uh, and then business. Um, there's a couple, there's a couple of people who we rely on sort of for advice and sort of, uh, bits like that. But, um, I'd say just mainly my, the, the group of mentors that, uh, that, that surround me, I won't, I won't name yeah. them individually, but I think it's very mm -hmm. useful as a, someone transitioning or, or whoever, like to have that group above you who can tell you openly like that's crap or, you know, you need a but you can go to them with anything. That's 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 the group that I think, uh, from a business point of view, I'd, I'd lean back on. That's not a quick fire answer. Sorry, I've, uh, I've slow fired that. That, that. Yeah, that was you've you've, you've dropped <laughs> anchor on that one. You've got some funds yeah. to invest. Uh, you can't put it four or five. What would you put uh, it in? I, I would put it in uh, wellness-based 
businesses, uh, I'd put it in sort of sustainability-based businesses. I think they're, they're two areas of, of growth. Mm. And arguably the toughest yeah. question yeah. of the lot. You can only watch one film back to back for the rest of your life. What would it be? Uh, Forrest Gump. It's got about eight different films in one film, and it's it's super long, and it's just <laughs> an absolute classic. Um, yeah, yeah, it is literally. It's a it's a it's a medley of films in one. So uh, yeah, I'd watch that. Yourself? Brilliant. First time I've had Forrest Gump. Oh, well, I went with something lame like Top Gun. The best answer we had was um was uh, Groundhog okay, Day. Yeah. yeah. What? Well, oh, best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was great. That was quite clever. That was John yeah, Wilkin. Nice. Nice. I like it. Yeah. Really fast. Wow. Brilliant. Brilliant. I think I might be digging out Forrest Gump, actually. That's uh, it's reminded me. I genuinely like that movie. Yes. Um, fantastic. George, thank you very much for joining us. It's been absolutely brilliant. Thank you very much to Tom. Thank you very much for listening. And we will catch you again on another episode of the Podium Podcast. Take care. Cut. What a brilliant conversation. And not only because it was enjoyable, but also because it was absolutely packed with insights. Here are a few that really stuck out for me. Firstly, lots of people would get demoralised if they were working their way from the bottom upwards. They'd get frustrated because their aspirations, their dreams, their expectations didn't match reality. George, on the other hand, focused on two things. Firstly, what a great opportunity this was for him and the fact that he was making progress. And that really fueled his motivation. He also talked about both recognising your super strengths and the role that you play within the team so that you can bring the very best of yourself to that team. And secondly, appreciating that you are not the finished article and there's headroom to grow into and to develop into. Those two things in combination are really powerful. And lastly, he talked about the power of stepping outside of your comfort zone. And that when we do step outside of our comfort zone, we develop confidence that we can take on challenges. Hope it's really useful. See you again soon.